Welcome back to Mike Talks About Dumb Shit. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Hundred Years' War. Uh, the Hundred Years' War was a battle between two faggot countries named France and England, both of which are now just completely run by fucking Muslims. So good luck getting any nice place there, unless you want to praise Allah and worry about Sharia law constantly. And, you know, if you're okay with getting beheaded, I guess it's not such a bad thing. But um, me personally, I think they're both pretty faggish countries. So today we're going to talk about how they had a war over who was the bigger fag. Essentially, England was like, I don't want to be your vessel anymore. And then France was like, but you have to, bro. Like, it's, it, it, that's the whole point of being a vassal. So England basically said, you know what, screw you guys, uh, war. And then uh, France was like, okay, uh, right back at you. So basically... Uh, let's look at the Wikipedia page. So, the war starts out with England basically saying, We'll go attack their fleet! Uh, after they had refused a French delegation to talk about not being faggots uh, in unison. But, yeah, as, England's, uh, as English people like to do, they didn't exactly have a license to go talk to the French, so they weren't allowed, and thus had to decline and call forth an army. Thankfully, they had a license for that. And uh, soon, they launched a fleet to go fight the French fleet. And then the French fleet was like, Oh, baguette croissant! And the English fleet was like, What if we just turn around and make them think we're retreating? And then the English all collectively decided to do that. Uh, meanwhile, the French thought they retreated because they view Englishmen as pussies. So, when the English came back, they were completely taken by surprise, because the English were only pretending to be pussies. Not really pussies, although it's English, so they're bound to be pussies at some point. Uh, basically, the wind and the sun was on their side, and when you have a literal fucking star at your side, uh, there's not much a puny French wooden fleet can do. So they won that battle. And then that uh, proceeded to go to a real faggish land battle. Alright, so it turns out the English uh, in their massive land battle at Cain uh, wasn't a massive battle, I tricked you. They actually just took the city unopposed with a huge army. Uh, King Philippe of France uh, was surprised. So he got together a huge army of knights and shit. Because uh, apparently French people have nothing better to do but to be cucks to their king. So they marched out to meet them, and then the Englishmen figured, what if we give bows to our army? But we don't give them to, you know, trained professional people. We just give them to some random peasants we find off the street. And the King of England was like, that's a great idea. So, uh, with their English longbow license in hand, they marched forward to meet the French at the Battle of... I'm not going to read the name. The name of the city's probably fucking gay. So... Uh, the battle then proceeded to go like this. The French would march out their super huge cavalry army, and uh, tiny wooden arrows would then punch through their huge full plate armor and kill them all. So the English won that battle almost single handedly. Uh, then the French were like, oh no, what do we do? Scottish people, please help us! And then the Scottish were like, ooga booga, ooga booga! And so uh, they marched forward in northern England. And then, uh, they lost because they're a bunch of fucking Scots, so what did you expect? Uh, then this proceeded to make the King of Philippe of France make some desperate measures. But the King of Philippe of France would not have to make these desperate measures for, uh, he was saved by God himself as he released the Black Plague upon his people and thus it affected the English people and, uh, hmm. You know, I'm, I'm done talking about fucking France and English bullshit. On to the real fun stuff. A uh, Hundred Years War, someone wins. You can look it up. I'm done telling you people about it. We're going to talk about Boss Baby. Boss Baby is a movie that's fucking brilliant. It has Alec Baldwin. It has other people. And here's the thing about Boss Baby. Essentially, the main humor of the movie is that... Kids and babies don't get along, and the babies do baby things. Like, 
it, it, it's just fucking comedy gold. A hundred years from now, I can see uh, historic comedians like uh, fucking Robin Williams, uh, Charlie Chaplin, you know, and 3005 talking about how wonderful Boss Baby was and how it changed the comedy scene forever. Uh, in the movie, one of the jokes is that uh, Alec Baldwin is actually a business baby, and the business babies are babies that don't get mothers and fathers and instead live in baby land. I'm pretty sure they meant to make it heaven, but just to not step on anyone's toes, they just don't give the place a name. I, I guess you could just call it the Disappointment Factory. So they go, they say in Disappointment Factory and help the business of the babies. And the whole point of the business of babies is to earn love. As in, the more people that love babies, the more, uh, I don't, uh, fucking ask the creator of Boss Baby what the fuck that means. And, uh, so, basically, Alec Baldwin's a boss baby, and he wants to get the super executive boss baby position, uh, but he has to go on a mission because puppies are getting more love than babies, and so, now the babies have to stop the puppies, so that way they can have more love than them. And, uh, basically there's this little faggot-ass kid named Jake or something, and he's like, Oh, my parents love me! <laughs> and, uh, Alec Baldwin meets him, and Alec Baldwin's like, Hey there, little Timmy. Well, how would you like to help me do a thing? Uh, it's called, Your Parents Not Loving You Anymore. So, basically, Alec Baldwin takes all of the Jake's love from his parents, or Jake's parents love from him, whatever way it goes, and then, uh, uh Jake's like, <laughs> I hate you! And then, uh, Alec Baldwin's like, a uh, goo goo gaga, and then, uh, one night he sneaks in on Alec Baldwin jerking off his baby dick, and then Alec Baldwin throws money in his face and says, strip for me, and then basically Alec Baldwin reveals the plot of the movie to Jake, and Jake's like, uh, I'ma tell mom and dad, and then uh, the hijinks ensue, where there's a, you know Lenny from Mice of Two Men, or some shit like that, Mice of Men, whatever it's called, uh, essentially they make him a baby in the movie, uh, explain that one to me, Mr. Christopher Nolan, or whoever the director was, Anyways, none of that's important. Anyway, they go to his, to Jake's dad works at Pupco, the the company that makes all the dogs, and they, they're gonna release a new dog that will be so lovable that no one will ever want to see babies again. They'll fucking lynch them in the streets. And then uh, Alec Baldwin's like, you "Gotta get me in there, kid." And the kid's like, uh, "I'm like seven. And then the kid, and they, and then they get into the Pupco place on Bring Your Kids to Work Day, and there's a cross-dressing guy who follows them throughout the whole movie, and it is so fucking surreal. It's like an actual rapist follows them the whole movie. Anyways, he's not important right now. He's in a furry costume throughout most of this scene. Uh, they sneak into the place by having Baby Man dress up as Puppy, and uh, a Puppy basically sniffs his dick, and then he's like, oh, oh, oh. and then uh, they get into the facility, and they find out uh, the plans for the new puppy, and it turns out they get captured, because it was a part of the owner of the company's plan all along, and the owner of the company basically says, I used to be a boss baby too, except my formula that keeps me young, oh yeah, the, the boss babies, um, they have a formula that basically keeps them young, uh, it, I'm not touching on that. Uh, he says, uh, and I was basically betrayed, and, uh, I want to kill all the babies now, lynch them in the sewers, and then Alec Baldwin's like, you'll never get away with this, and he's like, but I already have, and Jake, your parents are coming with me, uh, and then cross-dressing, uh, Puppy Man shows up and says, uh, I'm gay, uh, anyways, um, 
it goes on, and then the the, the boss baby says, oh, "I gotta go back to my place." And then uh, Jake says, "But I need you to save my parents." And uh, essentially, they go to the airport to try and catch up with his parents. But the cross-dressing tranny was with them, and they, they, she was the he was the baby uh, something. They, they were the nanny, and then um, they go to the airport after doing trick rad flips and whatnot to escape the nanny. And uh, while they're at the airport, they miss the flight, and they think they're going to lose. And then uh, they hug and kiss and have a bit of a make-out session, and then they find out that they can still catch the Elvis flight to Las Vegas, where the Pupco meeting is going to be. Uh, they kept, they get on the ride by disguising themselves as Elvis Presley, and that's a whole joke within itself. And so they get to fucking Las Vegas, and Tranny Man's still following them. And, uh... After Tranny Man uh, hunts for them, they make it to the MGM Grand, which essentially is where they're unveiling the new puppy. Surprise, surprise, the new puppy. It's a panda. It's a tiny panda. Moving on. Uh, and then they try to defeat Mr. Boss Baby, but not a Boss Baby anymore, man. But at this point, Alec Baldwin's losing his formula, and now he's starting to turn into a regular baby. And so, uh, he, he goes up to the, to the kid and says, Goo Goo Gaga, I've got this, uh, suck my penis. And the kid's like, no you don't, you're losing your mind, let's go get them. And then they go get them, and before, and they have a rocket that will disperse all the puppies to the world, and somehow not kill them. Uh, I'm not sure how well thought out this plan was. But, uh, they go up there and they say, Man, your time is done. Uh, you are under arrest by the citizen's arrest. And, uh, he says, Look, nigga. You wanna fuck with me, nigga? I'm a real nigga. I eat shits like you for breakfast, my nigga. And then a random pipe falls on him and he dies. Or some shit like that. And then they save the day, and then Alec Baldwin gets to be a real boss baby. He gets to be the executive chair, and Jake has his family back. But then Alec Baldwin says, fuck it, and basically molests a lady baby. I'm not even making this up. Like, some of my other parts may have been iffy in their credibility. Him molesting a random co-worker as a baby, and that co-worker being another baby... That, that, that's not fake. That, that, that's something real. That's something really happens. I was forced to come to this movie. I, I want someone to apologize to me. Because I fucking deserve it. Anyways, that that's Boss Baby. Uh, I give it a two chicken sandwiches out of four bologna sandwiches. Make of that rating what you will. I'm fucking done here. I'm gonna go jerk off or something. I don't know.